Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is day number two of Makeup Collection and Declutter Week of 2019. Today we are getting into blushes, bronzers, and highlighters, which is uh, it's gonna get a little intense. I have a, I have a lot of blushes and a lot of highlights, and I know it's going to be mildly painful for me to say goodbye to some of these products, but uh, it needs to happen. I definitely have more than I'm using, and I would like to just slim things down a little bit to a collection that I actually utilize. Now, if you are jumping into this series midweek, we are going through my entire collection in five videos. Yesterday, I covered all of my base products. Tomorrow, we're getting into eyeshadow palettes. Thursday, we're getting into like the rest of my eye makeup and brows and Friday we're doing lips so it's gonna be a pretty crazy week lots of really long videos lots of stuff being covered there are gonna be timestamps in the description box of this video if you want to skip ahead to a particular section if you don't have like 40 something minutes to sit here and hang out with me I understand it's it's a lot of me to ask but uh, if you do really really love decluttering and just want a friend to hang out with while you're decluttering your own stash hopefully you will enjoy uh, hanging out with me today so with all that being said uh, we, we have a lot of ground to cover today we got a lot to talk about so let's get into the makeup all right guys so uh, here's the situation it's a little ridiculous. Uh, I've got all of my blushes, bronzers, highlights, and face palettes. So this is what we're going to be tackling today. Talking about what's good, what's maybe not so good, and what is old as heck and needs to get out of my collection. So if you guys can't tell, I kind of have a thing for blush. I love it. It's one of my favorite makeup products. It's why I have so many, but uh, I definitely don't need all of these it's a little out of control so we'll try to pare some of this down now this guy here is pretty new to me it is one of the Jouer blush duos in the shade adore so this is something I'm going to be keeping I am uh, I'm kind of obsessed with this right now I've been using it for about I would say three weeks or so and I love it the shades are so beautiful and so natural on the skin it's never patchy it doesn't fade after like a couple hours it's just absolutely beautiful. Completely lives up to the hype and the packaging is gorgeous. So this is something I am keeping for quite a while. Something else I really love are these Lorac Color Source blushes. I have the shade Prism here and this one is called Aura. These are so nice. They're matte blushes, but they don't look flat and chalky on the skin at all. They don't have a shine or a sparkle to them, but they just have a little bit of a, like a healthy glow to it, if anything. They just they look so nice and so natural. They're really easy to work with, long wearing, and very underrated. So these I've used so many times and will continue to reach for, so I love them definitely keeping them. Another real easy one to get out of the way is this guy. This is one of the Aura Powders from Sigma. I love this packaging though. Isn't that fun? Uh, this is the shade Corderosa and I am uh, mildly obsessed with this blush. I have said it before and I will say it again. This is the most universally flattering blush shade. If you are someone that does not like blush, this is the blush that you need because it is so easy to work with. It looks good with pretty much every single look you do, every single skin tone. It's very neutral. It's not too dark. It's not too light. It shows up on pretty much everybody and it's just the perfect natural flush. It's kind of like a no brainer and I'm just, I think it's so good. It's not that expensive. It's like in the $20 price point, like I think maybe a high teens or low 20s, but it's not gonna break the bank and uh, it'll last a really long time. You get a decent amount of product in here and you get a little mirror. So this, fantastic, obsessed, love it. Now something I could probably declutter are these two blush duos from the Beauty Crop. I honestly haven't really even used these too much. They have a cream blush and a powder blush in one little compact. Uh, really my issue with these is that they're just, the pans are really tiny, so it's a little difficult to get your brushes in here. I just don't see myself reaching for these that often. I have so much else in my collection that probably best off giving these to a friend. Something else that's a bit of a no-brainer for me is this Bare Minerals Gen Nude Blush in the shade Peachy Keen. I love this. It is a bit more corally and deep than some of the other blushes I've shown you, but on the cheeks, it doesn't go on like too intense or clownish. It's so lovely. And this has like a slight sheen to it. Like it has tiny reflective particles, but it's not glittery. It's not metallic looking at all. It's not harsh in the skin. It just gives you this really beautiful, healthy, glowy flush and uh, 
so stunning. These are so easy to work with. I really enjoy this formula. So let's see, something I think I can declutter. I'm looking at this, which is funny and kind of makes me feel terrible. I love this blush and I used it to death back in the day. This is the Make Satin Finish Powder Blush in the shade Geisha. It's so pretty. It's a, it's a pink blush, but again, it's not too harsh. It blends out beautifully. This is just like super wicked old. It's very, very creamy. It feels so nice, but uh, I haven't reached for it in a long time because it's just years, years and years and years old. I don't know. I just have so many other blushes I love. I highly doubt I'm going to reach for this again on the regular. We had a really good run though. I definitely got my money's worth with this blush. So I have this little guy here, super adorable packaging. This is one of the Ciate Glow 2 Illuminating Blushes in the shade Matchmaker. It's a really pretty sort of like burnt rose color and it has a highlight shade marbled in, kind of similar to the way Hourglass does their blushes, but it's a little bit smaller. You get less product and it's less pricey. And this little guy, I really love. It is very, very glowy, you know, as the name would suggest, but it doesn't look like crazy and light reflective on the skin. Like you could wear a highlight or skip a highlight with this. It still looks fairly natural. And the shade is really pretty because it gives you that kind of more neutral, rosy toned flush that is flattering with a lot of different makeup looks. So I find myself reaching for this a lot. And you could tell too, like it's a little worn, a little grimy inside the packaging, but it's, it's because it's very, very loved. So uh, I would definitely like to keep this guy in my collection. Then there's this blush from Found, which uh, I kind of totally ruined the packaging. I had a little incident trying to get the glue off from the sticker that was on this guy and uh, oops. But the actual product inside is completely fine. This is another one of those kind of marbled products. And I'm curious to see how this swatches next to the Ciate one that I've got here. They do look fairly similar. This one is maybe a little more pink and a little less rose toned, a little like lighter, but very, very, very similar. This is the shade Pink Glow. So this may be a nice like dupe option actually if you don't want to spring for the Ciate one um, and you get a lot more product in here, I think. Given that I'm keeping the Ciate one, I don't think I need this. So I think I can pass it along to a friend, but I do think it's kind of a, a cool like dupe to be on the uh, lookout for. Let's let's chat Becca for a second. So this guy is old as heck, but I think I will never ever declutter because it was a limited edition product. This is one of the champagne splits that was in collaboration with Jaclyn Hill. This is the Blush Flower Child with the highlight Champagne Pop. And this is the only place I have Champagne Pop in my collection. Oh, look at that highlight though. It's like unreal. And this blush is so pretty. It's a gorgeous pink with a satiny sheen to it. These together are just like heaven. They're like angelic on the cheeks. I absolutely love it. So uh, yeah, this is like a collector's item in a way and also something I genuinely love and use a bunch. It's a powder product, so I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say that it's probably fine until it basically tells me otherwise and starts looking or smelling real funky. I wish they weren't uh, discontinued and they still made more of them. And then I have two of these luminous blushes. These are really beautiful and they're much more vibrant, kind of like tropical hues. These are very unique in my collection, especially this guy here, Tiger Lily, because I really don't have another orange blush. Now this looks kind of scary when you swatch it, but uh, on the skin, I feel like it kind of shears out to a really pretty orange flush on the cheeks. Again, these are luminous, so they have a bit of a sheen to them. This one uh, is Snapdragon and it's more of a hot pink. I think they're so stunning. Uh, and I tend to wear these more in the summer months than in the winter, so I haven't been reaching for them as much, but they're the kind of thing that usually ends up being rotated into my everyday makeup drawer come like May, June. So it might be time for some tough love uh, because I adore this blush and I think it's freaking amazing and so beautiful and it's a nice affordable option, but uh, do I really need it is the question. So this is from Physicians Formula. It's one of their mineral wear blushes. It's free of talc. It's actually got SPF 30 in the formula, which is kind of interesting. And it's this really, really soft, 
pink shade that almost looks like it doesn't show up on my skin but uh especially if you had fair skin this would be beautiful but even on my complexion it's very buildable and layerable so you can kind of just flush this on your cheeks and it never looks garish or harsh it's just so easy to work with i think it's amazing but here's a couple things one this packaging i kind of hate it it's so bulky physicians formula really needs to get with the program about making their products a little bit more like streamlined and compact because this drives me absolutely nuts and there's a mirror under here which is cool but i'd almost rather have the compact lid have the mirror in it and not be translucent and just have this whole thing be half as big then i have milani i have one of their rose powder blushes and then i have one of their baked blushes in the shade luminoso which as you can tell has seen better days the packaging is looking a little worse for the wear but the product inside is still good this is a really beautiful blush it's glowy it's peachy it's just super super stunning so many people love this and for good reason it's a gorgeous gorgeous product it just leaves really beautiful sheen on your skin of the two of these I like the rose one, but I think the Luminoso, like the baked blush formula, applies a little bit more smoothly on the skin. And I feel like this is just a cult classic product that I like having in my collection. So I could probably declutter this rose blush and keep this guy. I have this blush I got um, from Pretty Vulgar in a boxy charm. This is the shade Hush Blush. It's a really pretty kind of, again, neutral, rosy tone. I love these shades. This one is very, very soft uh, and very pigmented. You have to kind of work a little bit more gently with this. Otherwise, I feel like it goes on very, very pigmented onto the cheeks. But I really like the dusty rose tone of it. It's similar to Corderosa as far as the shade goes, but I feel like the formulas are quite different. Uh, and I do really enjoy reaching for this. The packaging is slightly on the bulky side, like it's not the best, but it's cute. I like the kind of whole vintage detail thing they've got going on here. I've got a little baby here of the NARS Orgasm blush that has been barely touched. And uh, you know, honestly, this is not my favorite blush. I used to be so into these like pinks with the gold duochrome situation, but I don't reach for it as much and I feel like this particular blush formula has a lot of like glitter chunks in it. It's it's not my absolute favorite. So I think I'm safe to pass this guy along. This here is a limited edition blush from Dose of Colors. It was part of their Mint For You collection. I really enjoy this. It is a more sort of bright pink blush uh, and it's very cheery, very springtime. It has a very soft formula to it. Uh, I kind of feel like this reminds me a little bit of the Physician's Formula blush that I'm getting rid of, but maybe a little bit more pigmented. So this has much more sleek, really cute packaging to it. I love the little embossed detail they have on the pan. Uh, and yeah, I, I like this. I definitely use it. It's been a little bit since I think in my winter fall rotation, this type of shade is something I gravitate towards a little bit less, but I'm sure once the spring rolls around, I'll be wanting to reach for this guy. But then I gotta ask myself, how different is Down Boy from that Dose of Colors blush? This one is also quite pink, maybe a little bit more cool toned. This one is also very, very soft. Let me just swatch. Hmm, I'm like running out of swatch space here. Yeah, that's a much more cool toned pink than pretty much anything else that's on my hand right now. So I this is relatively new to me. I just had it in my everyday makeup drawer for December and I really enjoyed reaching for it. So I'm not really keen on decluttering this guy yet either. Ugh, this however, this is gonna be a tough one. I really like this, but this packaging, it kills me because it's just so big. It doesn't fit in my everyday makeup drawer. Like it doesn't fit in my organizer on my vanity. It's too big. So it makes it much more difficult for me to reach for it, despite the fact that I think that it's stunning. So this is one of the Sweetheart Perfect Flush Blushes from Too Faced in the shade Beach Peach. And it has like three different strips of color. I usually just kind of swirl them all together like so, put it on my cheeks and it's a really beautiful natural shade. It's got that kind of golden, pinky, peachy vibe going on. It's not too harsh and it adds a bit of shimmer to the skin. It's got like little tiny glittery particles in it. 
not to the point where it's obnoxious. Um, I think it just gives your skin a really gorgeous flush. And I, I love this formula. I think it's so beautiful. It's an old school release from Too Faced, so nobody talks about this guy anymore. And I think if the packaging was a little bit slimmer and sleeker, it would be something that would be in my everyday rotation much more often. I don't really want to declutter it, but I feel like I should declutter it. So I'm going to put it in the declutter pile before I change my mind. And then probably the hardest thing of all of this are these in-stain blushes from The Balm. I don't know if they make these anymore, and these are wicked old. I've had them forever, but it's because I think they are some of the best blushes out there. This formula is so insanely long wearing uh, and it's beautifully pigmented, like not to the point where it's obnoxious, but it shows up with very little effort on the skin. It blends out really beautifully and it lasts. This shade Houndstooth is such a gorgeous plummy mauve tone. It's beautiful for fall and winter. I also have this bright pink shade and then this brighter hot coral shade here, which if I'm gonna be super honest with myself, I probably don't need to keep all three of these blushes. I love the formula, but they're old, and I don't necessarily reach for all of them. I think Houndstooth is the one I use the most often, so maybe I'll let myself keep this guy for posterity's sake, because if they truly don't make this anymore, like, I, I just love it so much, it's such a good blush. But I, I haven't reached for these two particular colors in a while, so I think I would be safe parting with them. Then there's just a few more little things here. I'm going to try to go through these cream blushes more quickly. I have the Pixie Multi Balm in the shade Baby Petal. I love this cream blush. I use it all the time on my no makeup makeup days because it is a gorgeous color. It blends out super easily onto the cheeks. It's not like insanely long wearing as most cream products are not, but it's just that very, very natural like hint of flush that I think looks so nice on the skin and it's just easy in a stick form to apply. So I definitely want to keep this. I'm also going to keep my Wander Beauty On The Glow Blush Duo in the shade, uh, what's that, what are you, Bare and Nude Glow. This again is a really easy like neutral flattering cream blush shade to wear every day when I'm kind of just throwing on like a BB cream and you also get a highlighter in here that is very natural and not too metallic just gives a nice subtle sheen to the skin so this is something I definitely do reach for often and want to keep but I think I'm going to declutter this Alouette face paint lip and cheek tint uh, in the shade Blooming Berry it's a very pretty shade but it is so concentrated and so pigmented I find it to be like a little difficult to work with like this is just it's a lot especially on the cheeks and it's very emollient it's very creamy I think I would honestly I like this better on the lips than on the cheeks because it's just kind of a little bit more sticky than I would like as a cheek product and again it's just like a little goes such a long way which makes it kind of hard to use without looking clownish on the face so I just I don't think I'm gonna get enough use out of this to justify keeping it this guy here is one of the flower blush bombs this is pretty new to my collection I just picked it up in the last couple weeks I've been testing it out so I'm gonna be keeping this so I can give you guys my full review in my January beauty report uh, so far I like this it's been a little challenging to work with part of it might just be the shade though I picked cinnamon which is a more more warm almost bronzy kind of tone so I feel like sometimes it kind of blends into my bronzer it's not like a true blushy pink tone I would kind of like to pick up another shade of this at some point in the future just to see kind of how that works for me or if I like it a little bit better but the formula like it's easy to work with the pigmentation is nice and it doesn't leave your cheeks feeling super sticky so I generally enjoy it and I will be keeping you guys posted by the end of the month. Last two blushes, I have this Pixie Sheer Cheek Gel. It's a much more watery product. Uh, it's kind of almost like the equivalent of a lip stain for your lips, but for your cheeks. And uh, I think it's a little more difficult to work with than a true cream as far as how it blends into like a BB cream or a base product. I feel like just on its own, on the skin, it adds a nice kind of sheer tint. Uh, it's definitely way less scary on the skin than it is on the tube, as you can see here by how it's staining on my finger and just the way that it applied on the back of my hand. Do I need this? 
No, probably not. I do like it, but uh, if I haven't reached for it in the last like five months, it's probably unlikely that I'm going to reach for it. So while it's not expired, I probably should pass it along to a friend. And then last but not least, this little baby blush from Tarte. This is in the shade Feisty, which I don't even know if this is part of the permanent collection, but I do really like this color. It's sort of a more warm, deep peach shade. It's really pretty. I actually like it a lot. So this is something I do reach for and uh, it's small, it's little, it's compact, it's travel friendly. So uh, I'm gonna let myself keep it. All right, so maybe it's time for like a little palette cleanse here. My bronzer collection is very minimal, comparatively speaking. So it's gonna be much easier for us to go through this quickly. So to start out, Butter bronzer, this guy has got like cult classic status at this point because it is an absolutely stunning bronzer. It leaves your skin just looking really healthy and glowy. Like it has a sheen to it, but it's not glittery. And it also feels like the name suggests, super buttery, silky soft. It's just a gorgeous product. And this shade, it's not gonna really show up when I swatch it because the back of my hands are probably more tan than my face is. But just trust me when I say, when I use this on a regular basis, it does show up and it looks really nice and natural. My other current obsession is the Makeup Forever Artist Face Color in the shade S122. This is a sculpting product and uh, it's bomb. This is such a beautiful contour, especially on light medium complexions. It just feels like it essentially blends out itself. It's so easy to use. It's so natural looking on the skin. It's got a nice neutral to cool undertone that's perfect for contouring. It's a... Uh, it's kind of the best and I haven't reached for it in a while only because I've been exclusively using butter bronzer for the sake of trying to use it up, but uh, I very much look forward to putting this guy back in the rotation. The cream bronzer that I use and actually like is the Benefit Hula Quickie Contour Stick. This guy is super, super creamy and easy to work with. It blends into your skin like butter. The one thing I will note, this product has fallen out of the packaging like four times on me. It's like really crazy looking inside. I've been able to kind of like smush it back down every time, but uh, that kind of sucks. I feel like for the amount of money I spent on this, it should be designed a little bit better, but Aesthetically, the packaging is super cute and the product inside is really nice. On the flip side, this guy, no bueno. This is another one of those Pixie Multi Bombs, but this is in the shade Sheer Sculpt and I don't like this at all. Like tone wise, it's a little bit more cool than the Benefit, which might be good for contouring, but I don't know if you guys can tell from what I just swatched. This just gets weirdly patchy and it like blends out to this weird like orangey tone on my skin like I don't know it just doesn't look good I, on me I feel like it ends up looking muddy it's also more glossy in texture than the other multi bomb like I was expecting this product to be like the blush but I feel like it has a weird a weird glossy finish that does not work well as a contour so I just I don't like the way that it blends out I don't really like the way it looks so this is an easy one to declutter this guy I legit just picked up the other day it's the Maybelline City bronzer bronzer and contour powder so I just am starting to test this guy out I've only used it once I thought it looked really nice the one time that I used it but uh, I'll have to keep you guys posted once I've had a chance to try it out some more Bahama Mama by the balm this one is really nice it's a bit on the deeper side so right now when I'm at my fairest this is a little dark than I would prefer to use on myself but uh it's a really nice bronzer I don't even know why I'm bothering swatching these because honestly like I feel like bronzers swatch terribly but they look beautiful when applied to the skin so you gotta just kind of trust me on this one this is a really nice bronzer it's very easy to work with but it is pigmented and it is a little bit deeper so if you're more of a medium skin tone I think this would work amazingly for you so you know I'm thinking I might declutter my makeup revolution ultra bronze this is a really nice bronzer uh, there's nothing wrong with it and it's super affordable it's only like eight bucks the packaging is just massive this thing is huge it takes up so much space I never want to keep it in my everyday makeup drawer so I haven't reached for it in a really long time and uh, now that I have the Maybelline one I'll have an alternative that's from the drugstore so uh, I don't think I need to hold on to this just know that it is a nice bronzer like if you were looking at this and considering picking it up and wondering if it was any good I think it's nice it blends out well it wears well on the skin and it's a good shade again for people with my skin tone now these two guys are a little bit more tricksy because they're kind of those mid-range price points uh, and they are nice products both of which I purchased with my own money so I'm not inclined to just declutter them but I haven't reached for either of them a ton I can't say they're like 
like my holy grail favorites. This is a Makeup Geek bronzer in what shade are you? Sunkissed. And then this is the Winky Lux bronzer in the shade Mocha, which I talked about in my products I regret buying. I regret buying this shade. I should have gotten Latte because this I think is just too dark for me. In the summer even, it's like a little questionable. Like, can you guys see the way I, when I swatch this? It's just, it's pretty dark. Where nothing else showed up on me, this one shows up. This tone, I think, is better matched for me. It's just a little bit more on the warm side. I feel like this is something I'd use as a true bronzer, not so much as a contour. So like, ugh, I don't know. I, I hate to declutter the coffee bronzer because I, I like the product, like the formula, the texture itself is nice, but if I'm never going to use it, it's uh, not really serving me. So I think ultimately what I'll do is I should declutter this guy. Maybe at one point in the future I'll get Latte because I think I would actually end up using that one more. But I'll hold on to the Makeup Geek one. I think I'm going to try using this a little bit more this year, see what I think of it, and if I don't end up loving it, then I can declutter it later on. Then there were highlighters. So something right off the bat I know I'm going to keep that I love is my Persona Cali Glow Highlighter in the shade Zuma. This is all kinds of stunning. I absolutely love this formula. It's uber creamy. It's got that peachy champagne undertone to it. It is hella blinding on the skin uh, and I wear it a ton. So I have absolutely zero plans on decluttering this guy anytime soon. But something that I think I can safely declutter is this highlight, if only because it's just not the right tone I think for me and the formula is good, but I think it's very similar to these Pixie ones and I think I actually like the Pixie better. This is from Pop Beauty. It is one of their Prismatic Pop highlights in the shade Lunar Light. This is a rose gold kind of highlight and uh, it is pretty. It kind of has that glossy finish to the skin, but it is a little bit more like rose gold, has a little bit more of that grayishness in the undertone. So when you're not in the light and it's not reflecting, it kind of looks a little bit dark and dingy on my light complexion. So I think I could find somebody else that this would suit better. Speaking of Pixie, I think these are some of the best drugstore highlights. Oh my god, they are so freaking stunning. I love them. Uh, these are their Glowy Gossamer Duos. I have the shade Delicate Dew and Subtle Sunrise. And while I think the formula is amazing, do I really need both of these duos? Probably not. I think Subtle Sunrise is the one I personally tend to reach for more because it has that more golden toned highlight. And you do have one that's kind of peachy rose gold. I think this one works well for people with slightly deeper complexions, which like I'm still light medium, but I'm not like super uber fair or pale either. This one, uh, Subtle Sunrise, is more of that kind of pinky toned highlight also super pretty. But yeah, in general, I feel like both of those tones are more on the pinky peach side. So I'm sure there is a friend out there of mine that would love to have one of these. So I'm gonna not be selfish and I'm gonna pass along subtle or delicate dew, delicate dew, that's right. And I'm going to keep subtle sunrise for myself. I've also got two shades of the Physicians Formula Butter Highlights, and I do absolutely love this formula. I think it's gorgeous. If you can tell uh, which one I reach for more often, I have Champagne here, which has got a sizable dent in it, and I have Rose Gold, which is barely used. And the thing about Rose Gold, again, I think I want to believe that I am more tan than I actually am. So I bought this hoping maybe it would work for me, but it's just, it's a little deep for my complexion like I can make it work but uh, I just don't find myself reaching for this guy quite as much the formula though is absolutely bomb it feels I mean it's a cream so it feels super moussey and lightweight to the touch it's not sticky at all and it has kind of like tiny little flecks of micro shimmer in it but it doesn't look crazy on the skin. It's just super, super light reflective. And as it is a cream product, I find it just blends beautifully over like more creamy products like a baby cream. So I use this like a lot on my no makeup makeup days. So 
We'll, uh, we'll keep champagne for sure, but I think I'm gonna take rose gold and pass that along. So let's chat wet and wild for a second. I uh, just picked up this loose highlight in the shade I'm So Lit, like, I don't know, less than a week ago. So I just started testing, trying this out. It is uh, pretty, pretty freaking beautiful. It's very, very shimmery. Uh, it's almost more of like a, like a fine, fine glitter pigment. It's it's kind of blinding and ridiculous on the skin. I'm excited to play around with this more And then I have two shades of the mega glow highlighting powder in the pressed format This one is precious petals that I've had for quite a while I like using this more in the summertime because I feel like it looks amazing when you have a tan It's kind of like a peachy pinky gold Highlight almost like a blush topper like this would definitely be a blush topper on someone that was very fair um, but on me when I'm really really tan I can get away with it being a bit of a highlight this is the shade Bloom Time, which is even more pink, definitely more of a blush topper, but it is really pretty. I just also picked this guy up and uh, just started playing with it. I like to hold on to these guys. They're wicked affordable, like under $5 or around $5, and I think the formula is really nice. It gives you that kind of wet look sheen but it doesn't have a lot of fallout from the pan they're kind of more of that baked gelée formula so if you if you want a really good cheap highlight these ones pretty nice now going into filming this i don't think i anticipated decluttering any of my ofra highlights but now that i'm really thinking about it i don't know that i need to keep them all because i got this at gen beauty it's the shade all the lights and this is in their new packaging, which is a bit bulky, but it's more streamlined and kind of high-end looking, which I appreciate. And essentially, this has four quadrants in which it has Star Island, Pillow Talk, Rodeo Drive, and Blissful. So I own Rodeo Drive in full size and Blissful in full size. I don't own either of these two highlights. So it's kind of nice that I have the option of all four shades here or swirling them together to create a custom shade. So it begs the question, if I have Rodeo Drive in this highlight, do I really need Rodeo Drive in the single? Let me just swatch next to each other to see. Now, this is interesting. These, to me, are swatching a little bit differently. The one, my old one that I had in the single is a little more, like lighter, first of all, and it's a little bit more powdery. I feel like the one in the quad is more metallic almost and shiny. That is that is very, very interesting. I hadn't actually swatched them next to each other before to see what the difference would be. I mean, I do like the original. This guy is so absolutely stunning. But again, I probably have other highlights similar to this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna consider decluttering this guy. We'll put that aside for a second. This I think I definitely am going to declutter. This is the Ofra highlight in the shade Everglow. It was part of their Nikki Tutorials collab that they did. It's really cool, um, but I just find myself reaching for this less because all three of these shades are like not exactly quite right for me. This one's really too light, this one's too dark, and this one's kind of like okay, but maybe verging on the side of being a little bit too uh, dark. So I don't know. I just don't find myself as inspired to reach for this particular highlight. I think I would be safe to pass it along to a friend. All right. Well, how about we talk some Becca stuff for a second? I have a full Prosecco Pop Shimmering Skin Perfector here, which is uh, absolutely stunning. I love this. It's a very gold toned highlight, but I really like how it looks on my skin. I'm going to just swatch this down here. So this is more gold toned than Rodeo Drive is and it's a little bit lighter. Uh, I definitely want to keep this. I was just using this in my everyday makeup drawer and I only just swapped it out for January so I could use something else but uh, I love this formula. I love this color. I also have an itty bitty baby here of the shade Opal which is also super stunning and slightly more neutral. It's a little less gold, kind of more champagne in tone. Oh, that one is also super stunning. I, I actually really, really like this. I enjoy this highlight and this formula and this color, so I'm not really inclined to declutter it. But I will say, I never, ever, 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 ever reach for the cream version. And as much as this is beautiful, like I just, I know it's kind of a waste to keep this in my collection, so I can declutter that. And honestly, I think the same thing is gonna go for this Marc Jacobs Glow Stick. I think this is a beautiful product. It's a really pretty cream highlight. It's just old. I've had this for what feels like an eon, and 
I just don't really reach for it anymore. It's a little bit also on the greasier side, texture wise. It doesn't like dry down to a powdery finish. It feels kind of oily and slick. So it's not my favorite for my skin type. It's pretty tonally. I just, I'm kind of over it and uh, I think it's past it's prime. The Milani highlight. This guy I think is so underrated. It is a gorgeous drugstore highlight and I feel like this formula does not get as much love as it deserves. It's very, very smooth. There's very little fallout or like powder kick up in the pan when you put your brush in here. This shade is 03 Sun Glow, a little bit deeper, but it works beautifully for my skin tone. And this I feel like is very similar to Rodeo Drive. So I think, I think I'm safe to say that I'm gonna keep this guy because I love having an affordable highlight on hand and I can declutter my full-size Rodeo Drive. I still technically have it in the All The Lights Compact even though it is a little bit different, but uh, I don't think I'm gonna be missing out on that particular shade or finish because these guys are like such close dupes for one another. Moving along, all right, Mary Luminizer. This is like the OG highlight of highlights. It's so beautiful, super pigmented, super blinding. Definitely enjoy this and would like to keep it. It's also fairly new to my collection in full size. I've always only ever had it in sample versions. This little Fenty Beauty Baby is new to my collection. Picked this up around the holidays. It's in the shade Hustla Baby. This is a really gorgeous, peachy gold champagne color, really into this. And uh, since it's new, I think I wanna keep it and continue to use it. But I think I'm going to declutter this Artist Couture Diamond Powder in the shade Illuminati. I got this in a boxy charm. And while it is, you know, absolutely stunning, undoubtedly, I just never reach for it because I don't reach for these loose powder highlights all that often. I mean, there's no doubt this shade is stunning and it is like a diamond finish. It's very, very sparkly. It has a lot of micro glitter in it, which is also probably part of the reason why I don't wear it as much. I'm not really as into the glittery style of highlights. So I think if I want something glittery, I'm gonna go with a pigment for my eyes. If I want a highlight on my face, I'll go with something that's a little more sheeny and less sparkly. Uh, but maybe somebody else out there will love this and be able to appreciate it better than I am. Speaking of things that are glittery that I prefer to use on my eyes instead of on my face, these uh, Cover FX glitter drops, I do not like to wear these as a highlight and I keep them actually in my eye drawer with my eye products because I think these are better, almost like a cream eyeshadow. I just, I think maybe if you wanted like a super glittery look on the face, you were going for a particular kind of look, these would work. But I just, I think as a highlight, it's like too much for me. It's too much sparkle. It's, it's beautiful, don't get me wrong. Like I love shimmer. I just prefer it on my eyes. So that's how I've been using these. I just kind of tap them all over the lid for a really pretty glittery eye look. So uh, I will keep this because I'm going to use it, but uh, just know that I don't really use this as a highlight. And then last, I have a few little cream products here. I have two from the Beauty Crop. I have this Glamazon Creamy Highlighting Crayon and then the Lighting Crew like Liquid Highlighting Cream. I like the Lighting Crew texture better than I like the stick. I find the cream to be a little on the waxy side. Like it's not my favorite texture. The tone of it is really pretty but uh, I just don't find myself reaching for this crayon as much as I would like to, so I think I am safe to pass this guy along. But the Lighting Crew is nice. This one is more of a true like liquid highlight, uh, and it's got a kind of nice pinky pearlescent sort of sheen to it that looks really beautiful on the skin. This Girlactic Duo I got in a boxy Lux box, and I'm like a little, I don't Know how I feel about this. It smells like roses. It's actually really quite pleasant. These are very sheer, shiny, creamy products. They're not super, super pigmented. They have a nice amount of shine to them. Um, I've used them a little bit, but like not a ton. So I kind of feel like I don't really know how I feel about them. They're, they're still relatively new to my collection. So uh, pardon my hairy arms. I'm running out of space to just watch things for you guys. 
But uh, yeah, they're both a little bit more on the pinky tone side. I think you could use these as highlights or like blush toppers. Um, I think I would like to keep this just to test it out a little bit more and develop my thoughts on it. And then last, I have this little itty bitty baby sample of the Cover FX Custom Enhancer Drops in the shade Moonlight. This is a really pretty cream highlight, and I think because it's so dang small, I don't mind hanging on to it. I would never buy the full size of this because it's so expensive, and I don't think you would ever need that much product. But uh, I, I like having this as an option. It's a really pretty shade if I do want to use a cream highlight on a more natural makeup day. And then finally, face palettes. Right on top here is a Tarte palette. This is actually a customizable magnetic palette that I put all of my singles in. So this I'm going to be keeping and keeping as it is for right now. I have three actual products from Tarte. So you can see this is designed to hold nine blush or highlight pans. I do like these and I haven't been reaching for them enough. So I need to kind of like get back in here and use this again. I have a full on obsession with the Tarte Natural Face Palette. It is such a gorgeous all in one palette. It has two highlights, two blushes and two bronzers. Although I tend to use this bronzer more like a blush because it's very shimmery, uh, but it smells like vanilla coconut. Coconuts, it's delicious. All the products in here blend beautifully on the skin. It's just, it's so stunning and the packaging is A++. Now something that is beautiful to look at, but I honestly seriously doubt how much I'm going to get good use out of it, is this Tarte Park Avenue Princess palette. This guy is a contouring and highlighting palette. I got it in a boxy Lux box. It smells like vanilla. It is delicious. And uh, the thing is for me, do I really need two highlights and four contouring shades in one palette? Like this to me is much less usable than something that would also have blush options as well. Like I don't need four contouring shades at once. These are all too similar. Yes, some of them are a little bit shimmery. Some of them are matte, but uh, I just feel like this palette is kind of redundant to me. I just don't think I'm gonna reach for this much, especially considering hiding under here is the Tarte Tartist Pro Glow Palette. This I do use and I do really enjoy. Now this has four highlights and two contours, but all the highlights are different and have a different look on the skin and you get a cream contour as well as one powder. So this palette is something I actually reach for and it feel like it's more helpful when I travel, if I am gonna travel with this, cause I get more use out of all six products. Now I have two of these Pixie Glow Cakes. These were just sent to me recently in PR and I haven't had a chance to use this one yet at all. So I kind of would like to try it out before I decide which of these I want to declutter. I don't think I need to keep them both, but uh, I would like to see how I like this one and if I like it better than the Bear, I think what is this, Bear Champagne Glow? Gilded Bear Glow. This one here is called Pink Champagne Glow. So the pink champagne one may show up a little bit more on my skin than this, which is not a complaint. I just felt like this was a little light on me, like it didn't really show up as much. It was more glow than anything else. So gonna gonna give these both a little bit more time, but the plan is to ultimately only keep one. And while we're on the topic of Pixie, this palette came out at the beginning of 2018. It was a collab with Dulce Candy I love this palette. I know not everybody was into it, but this is a palette you can use for your eyes or for the face. It's all just pretty happy, shiny shades. And uh, you know, I haven't reached for it as much recently, but like, I, I wish I reached for it more because I love the formula. It's very, very kind of like a little metallic, but like very, very shiny. Kind of has a creamy feel to it, even though it's a powder. Oh, just like how beautiful is that finish though? So, so stunning on the cheeks. I just, I think it's really, really nice. And I think it's one of the better formulas that Pixie has come out with. Now this uh, palette here is from Koki. It's their powder contour palette. And I think this retails for like $12. It's very affordable. It's a great little contouring palette if you want a contouring palette. Do I feel like I use this on a regular basis? Not really, because I tend to honestly reach more for my single bronzers than I do for these contouring shades in here. Also, all the highlighting shades are matte. You've got a few different undertones for setting, um, so you can kind of brighten with this peach or like kind of color correct. You have a more yellow tone and then a neutral tone. Uh, so I think the actual like quality of these powders, they're pretty, they're pretty silky, like a little, a little on the chalky side, but they're soft. They blend out really nicely. Um, I've generally been pleased with the looks I've created with this, as you can see as I'm swatching, like there's a bit of kick up. They're more powdery powders, but uh, for 
I don't have massive complaints. And then finally, I have the Sigma Blush and Sigma Sculpt palettes. Now, I wasn't like super blown away by these as much as I love a lot of Sigma's makeup. The Sculpt palette, I don't know. The undertones in here and kind of the way these powders applied on my skin was not like anything that like blew me out of the water. This highlight is is pretty. It's buildable. It's not too crazy intense. These two shades though are just kind of dark, so I never really find myself reaching for them. Uh, I like that they have such a deep contouring shade in here. I feel like it's helpful if you want to use this palette on multiple skin tones. Just for my paler face, I don't just I don't think I'm gonna get a ton of use out of these. I found every time I tried to blend out the matte powders, they were a little patchy on my cheeks. Like I just couldn't get them to blend the way that I wanted. And uh, so yeah, I just, I, I, don't, I don't feel attached to this. And like, it's more a product that I want to love because I love a Sigma than a product that I actually love. But the blush palette, I think I like better. A, I love, I love blush. I love having different options of blush colors. This to me is more usable because I will use all of these shades in one way or another. I love Corderosa. I do already have it in a single, but it is nice if I like wanted to travel and I wanted to have a bunch of different blush options. This is a good way to do it without having to pack a bunch of singles. So I think I will hold on to the blush palette just because it's something I'm much more likely to actually get use out of, but uh, Sculpt, Sculpt's gonna go. All right, guys, so this is what I am keeping of my blush bronzer highlight collection and all of my face palettes. Uh, still a lot, but I feel like I, I did pretty good. I let go of quite a few things considering the overall size of my collection, so uh, I'm happy with that. Over here, this little pile is what I am decluttering, including the Sculpt palette that's just kind of hang <laughs> hanging out there. So that is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I know these videos are like epically long, so if you're still here, Thank you for watching all the way to the end. I hope you enjoyed this video, took something away from it, whether it be the product reviews or just having someone to hang out with while you are decluttering yourself. Definitely let me know in the comment section down below if you are decluttering and whether or not you are going through this process. How well are you doing? Are you feeling pretty good about yourself? Chat with me, let me know. I love talking to you guys. And if you enjoy declutter videos, even when they're super long like these ones, give this video a thumbs up. I always really appreciate your support it definitely helps me out and helps me be found by new people whenever you guys recommend me by liking my videos so thank you thank you if you're doing that and also if you don't want to miss out on tomorrow's video or the rest of my makeup collection and declutter week make sure you are subscribed ring the notification bell if you want to know exactly when videos go live and uh, with all that being said I have taken up so much of your time so I'm gonna let you go enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you in tomorrow's video Bye.